Hi everyone, this is Dave, I'm a tier 20k on merch by Amazon and just started sharing my experience through the past years with all of you. Hope it benefits you on the long run. So, let's go a little more deeper into the submission form for merch by Amazon. What fields should we fill and what we shouldn't even touch? To learn how the process works the right way, let's break down each field one by one and briefly address what is systemically correct and what is just a hoax that never works and may even lead to account suspension. So here is the breakdown of what we'll go through in the upcoming minutes. First we have the brand name then the product title. Afterwards, we'll get into deep details regarding bullet one and bullet two. And lastly, we'll explain how description fields work and if they are any good. Let's start by brand names. We usually use them for two reasons. First reason is simply about collecting products under one brand name. For example, if we have 10 designs uploaded and all of them are about Christmas, then if a customer found one of them and frankly, he liked it and wanted to see some more products of yours, He'll simply click on the brand name and Amazon will open the search page with all of your designs that were published under the same brand. This feature gives you an extra step towards a better exposure of your products. Second reason is all about SEO. As brand names are part of Amazon SEO, that means that your brand name works side by side with your bullet points and your product title. Thus, you must think twice before choosing your brand name for a batch of designs. Now you know what brand name is used for. Let's move on to product title. Product titles are on the top of the SEO pyramid which means if your product title isn't on point, nothing will work even if the brand name and the two bullet points are highly SEO optimized. Let me tell you a little trick most sellers use to avoid false positives by Amazon trademark bot. I personally call it the sandwich trick, as you'll put your product title between an opener word and a closure word. Opener word must always be a word that describes the vibes of your design and must come first thing in your title. For example, motivational, inspirational, artistic, modern, joyable etc. After your opener, the second part comes in. Here you simply write whatever title you want to use for your design. Third and final part, the closure word. For example, quote, saying, artwork, illustration, etc. So, let's see a full example for a product title. Motivational ballet dancer artwork. Let's break it down. Motivational, opener, ballet dancer, title, artwork, closure. Simple as that, this trick is nothing more than a way to prevent glitches and mistakes of the trademark bot which means it protects your account from mistaken terminations. Next up, bullet point one and bullet point two. Both starts with opener word, then your long tail niche keywords comes in. No closures for those fields. Let's take one by one. Bullet point one. Opener word, great for. Niche long tail keywords, those who are interested in dancing with lovable cats and kittens for Christmas. Final bullet one, great for those who are interested in dancing with lovable cats and kittens for Christmas. Here you have cats, kittens, dancing, Christmas along with opener word. That's so far the best way to come up with safe, SEO-optimized bullet point. By the way, it's highly advised to use targeted expressions for each niche. For example, cats and kittens are way too generic to give you good results. Instead, I'd use a word like shelters or pet adoption, along with a specific cat breed. That way I can reach more potential customers than when I just use cats and kittens. For bullet point two, it'll be formatted of two parts, the opener phrase and sub-niche targeting. Let's see an example for this one. Perfect for vegan mothers who are interested in adopting stray cats and cheerful dads who breed rare cat bloodlines. In the past example, the opener phrase is perfect for, and the rest is where we targeted the sub-niches which are vegan niche, mother's niche, adopting stray cats niche, rare cats and breeding niche. That's it for bullet points. Openers are used to protect against glitches. Bullet 1 is for main niche targeting. Bullet 2 is for sub-niche targeting. Let's move on to the last field, which is the one for your description. Unlike the common belief, descriptions are totally worthless. Let's see why. When a customer searches for a specific shirt on Amazon, the search algorithm integration with Merch by Amazon is connected through the following fields only. Brand name, product title, bullet one, and bullet two. That's it. Description is not even part of your SEO process. So the idea of wasting time on a good optimized combination of keywords is totally useless in this field. Yet, description field is still part of the trademark check process. Like, in best case scenario, your description will be clean of trademarks and the product will get accepted. But your description won't help your sales neither your search results ranking. And in any scenario other than this one, your product will get rejected due to a trademark match. Bottom line, forget all about your description field for good. Now you know how the submission form works. But that's not all, you still have to test every field for trademarks to ensure you're not violating any policies. Anyways, let's start. We'll be using Trademarkia.com to check for trademarks as it's the best platform for checking trademarks due to its fascinating sensing to the US trademarks database. Here's the submission data we'll use to illustrate the process. 
Brand name, quotes of cheerful kittens. Product title, modern artistic kitten quote. Bullet 1, great for those interested in adopting lovable cats and breeders of kittens. Bullet 2, perfect for lovable single mommies who adopt and breed rare types of cheerful kittens. Description, empty. Now we'll start analyzing each field and properly test it for trademarks. Starting with brand name. Here we have quotes of cheerful kittens. First thing to always do is to split the field to few parts. For example, if we have the following text. Blue, red, yellow, pink, green. We'll split it to the following parts. Blue, red. Red, yellow. Yellow, pink. Pink, green. Next, we'll test each part on trademark yeah, and ensure none of them is matching with a live trademark. Back to our brand name. We'll split it as follow. Quote of cheerful. Cheerful kittens. If both of them are clean, we'll move on to the next field. If not, we'll simply tweak it to something else that is clean of trademarks. Moving on to product title, modern artistic kitten quote. We'll break it down to the following. Modern artistic. Artistic kitten. Kitten quote. Then test each part of the three through trademark yeah, and if one of them is matching a live trademark. Then we'll tweak it and ray test. If not, we'll proceed to the next field. For the bullet points, I'll break down the first one only, and leave the second one for you, and tell me your result in the comments. So let's keep going. Our bullet one is written as follows. Great for those interested in adopting lovable cats and breeders of kittens. For bullets we start testing right after the opener phrase, so we'll be breaking it down as follows. Interested in adopting. Adopting lovable. Lovable cats. Cats and breeders. Breeders of kittens. And as usual, we will tweak it till it's clean. Other side notes I'd like to address. Product title doesn't need to be saying the exact quote on the shirt. But still, it must be 100% relative to your design. Other than that it'll be considered as manipulative title which is against merch by Amazon policies. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. Feel free to subscribe as it motivates me to keep going. Cheers.